All right, good morning, happy Sabbath, Merry Christmas, everyone. Just want to welcome everybody to our church. Uh, thank you for joining us this morning. Um, for announcements, we don't really have one except from Pastor Puya, so I guess I'll invite him over right now. <laughs> I always find it interesting when Justin does, does the announcement and welcome. Very short, concise, straight to the point. <laughs> right, sorry. My cable here. All right. Happy Sabbath, everyone. Come on, I think we can do better than that. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Aloha. Aloha. We give thanks to God here at the Waipahu Seventh-day Adventist Church for leading us throughout 2021. And we have come to the final Sabbath. Um, Auntie Dolores, if she was here, I believe she would want to make the announcement that we have a special Christmas celebration right after potluck, I believe, or is it during potluck? Right after potluck, right? 1.30 p.m. Okay, thank you. So, please do not go home. If you don't have any plans for the afternoon, please stay behind at 1.30 we will have a Christmas program where we'll hear special music and uh, uh, special messages of Christmas-related uh, topics, all right? So if Auntie Dolores were here, I, I believe she would have other announcement regarding that, but that's as far as I know. But at this time, I want to have a special prayer. Uncle Dennis and Atalaima, um, I need you guys here. So I want to invite all the new uh, members for the board next year. Uh, not everyone is here today, but I still want to make a, have a special prayer time anyway. I wish I could invite everyone to the stage, all the leaders, all the officers, but we don't have the space for everyone. So we already voted this a couple of weeks ago. And so at this time, I would like to invite, uh, where's Elder Sonny? Our new head elder, Elder Sonny. Uh, would you mind calling him? Yeah. And our assistant elder will be... Uh, Elder Frank Cruz, would you mind coming to the front, Uncle Frank? Um, Elder Frank Cruz and Elder Dennis Toro, please come to the stage. Yes, please come to the front as I call you guys. Yes, please. Uh -huh. And uh, we will have a prayer time at this time. Our head deaconess will be Lima uh, Acosta. Oh, wait a minute. Did I? Oh, wait a minute. I have, I have, the, wrong, I have the wrong file here. Uh, my bad. My bad. I was looking at the uh, previous document. Anyway, um, all right. So Noel uh, is not here. Bernard is Bernard here today? Oh, he's not feeling well. I mean, one of his family members not feeling well. We have two new treasures. I mean, not new, but. One new treasure that would be Leanne Boone. Auntie Leanne will be helping uh, Winona, Auntie Winona. So they would, the two would be chairing, um, leading the treasury department together. Auntie Carol will continue to be our church clerk. And um, uh, Michelle DeSoto, she's not here for communication. Uh, Lima for uh, Sabbath school, right? Please come to the stage. And um, Justin Wells. Youth, youth department, youth ministry, uh, and as well as the social department, please come to the stage, right? Ethel, please come to the stage for our music department leader. Colleen Ramirez, uh, please come to the stage for Pathfinder and Adventurer. If Dolores was here, she would be on women ministries. We don't have her here yet. Um, is Auntie Winona here? Uh, Peter Rivera for AV department, please come to the stage. Um, sorry. Okay, so we have the head uh, treasurer position, stewardship, personal women, music, social community, communication, youth department. And uh, we don't have a health ministry leader yet, and uh, we're pending a membership transfer of someone. <laughs> so the board, the nominating committee recommended uh, a name uh, to the church board that uh, as soon as the membership transfer is completed, the board will con consider for the health ministry department leader. And uh, we have a few members of the board that are not here with us today, 
but probably joining us on YouTube. So we welcome you all. But uh, church, I present to you the church board officers for the next two years, 2022 and 2023. And uh, uh, among us is Elder Dennis, Uncle Dennis, who is not ordained as an elder yet. So next Sabbath, oh, Auntie Winona, please uh, join us to the stage. Uh, this is the next board leaders. Uh, uh, next Sabbath, Elder Jay Warren from the conference, our conference executive uh, secretary, the vice president of the conference. He will come to Waipahu Church next Sabbath, and he will be having a special ordination service for Uncle Dennis Toro. So he will be ordained as an elder next Sabbath. So uh, please be here next Sabbath if you can. And uh, Grammy, I almost forget, please, uh, community service. Uh, Grammy Francis, yes. Food, food bank and community service. I almost forget, I apologize. Okay. Uh, all right, so these will be the board. All right, let me turn on my mic here. So all right, so I'll stand here at the corner. So these will be our church officers for the next two years. Uh, please keep everyone in your prayer. The board meets uh, once a month. Uh, it's a lot of work uh, to plan and uh, strategize for the church. And so we need your prayers. And we need everyone in the church to work together and to support one another. And it is just because we have leaders does not mean that it's only their job, right? So please, uh, please talk to any one of us to say, hey, how can I help? How can I support? Right? We always need help. We always need everybody to get involved. So with that, um, uh, let me offer a special prayer for our leaders for the next two years. And we will ask God to give these leaders special wisdom from above that they may lead us in the right direction, not in the direction that we want to go, but in the direction that God wants us to go. All right. So, um, if you can kneel, please join me in kneeling. Uh, if not, it's okay. You can sit down and I will offer a prayer. All right? <clears throat> Let us pray. Father in heaven, this morning uh, on this uh, special Sabbath, the last Sabbath of the year, uh, we thank you for all your blessings and having led us uh, through the past, especially through the past two years, uh, 2020 and 2021 through the pandemic, that through the ups and downs of life, we have lost quite a number of our mem members and friends, and among them especially Christian Mascarinus. We miss him dearly. And uh, as we move forward into the new year, um, we, we do have uh, prayer requests, Father, this morning that you will bless these leaders, these new leaders for the next two years of our church calendar years. And Lord, we invite the Holy Spirit to give us special wisdom, uh, special guidance, uh, to direct us in the direction that you want us to go forward, not in the direction that we want to go, but in the direction that you want us to go. So, Father, I pray for each and every single leader of the different departments that, Lord, you will bless every single person so that they may have wisdom uh, from you uh, to strategize and to plan in a way that will direct uh, the department and the different ministries forward. And so as we work together to serve you and your people, uh, may we move forward in one accord, in unity, under the banner of Christ Jesus our Lord, and may we faithfully serve you uh, until the day of Jesus Christ. And so, Father, we pray for your special Sabbath blessing at this time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 All right. Thank you. You may now go back to your seats. Okay, with that, I also want to take this uh, opportunity to thank each and every one of you who have served in the board uh, during the past two years, especially Elder Tyler Crouch. Um, we thank you for your service. Um, we're sad that your family is planning to move to the Big Island, right? It's always sad to lose members. You know, I told Elder Tyler uh, first when he first told me that their family was considering, I said, as a pastor, of course, I don't want to see you go, you know. I, want to, I don't want to lose members. <laughs> but we pray that wherever the Lord leads you next in your family, uh, that He will continue to guide you, all right? But Waipahu will always be your church, all right? In fact, if you don't want to transfer your membership, it's okay if you want your membership to be here, all right? And other members of the board who have served in the church board for the past couple of two years and also in other parts of ministry, I want to thank each and every one of you for your service. 
And as we continue to serve the Lord together in the next two years, may we pray and ask God to continue to lead us. All right? Thank you. Merry Christmas. Aloha. And happy Sabbath. All right. Back to you, Justin. Behold, the virgin shall be with child and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which is translated God with us. May the congregation please rise. Father in heaven, once again, we thank you for the Sabbath. We invite the Holy Spirit to be with us at this hour. As we worship you, may we hear your voice loud and clear, and may Jesus be lifted up. In his name we pray. Amen. Please remain standing for our hymn of praise. Oh, come. 
Good morning. Happy Sabbath, everyone. I'd like to ask our congregation to please kneel with me as we have our pastoral prayer. And also, if you have a special prayer request, um, can I know that at this point? Uh, you can just raise your hand and say, I have a silent request. Okay, there's one. Pastor. Okay, great. All right. See everybody's hands. Okay, let's kneel with prayer. Father, happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath, Heavenly Father. We thank you so very much for this special and, and wonderful season, but also this special Sabbath. We know that uh, it is Christmas Day. We know that um, your son may, may not have come on this day. That's immaterial. But Heavenly Father, we are very and gracious that you have provided your son to atone for our sins, to um, sacrifice himself on the cross. And we thank you for his sacrifice for us. And Father, we, at this point in time, we are here together as a church family, coming together to worship you, to adore you, and to give praises to our Emmanuel, our Christ with us. We pray for your Holy Spirit to be with us this morning as well. We have our church family that have special requests on their hearts and on their minds. And we ask for the Holy Spirit to come especially close to them. That each person, the groanings of the Holy Spirit can be raised to you in a special way this morning. We also want to pray for a church family who are not here with us this morning. Perhaps they're watching through YouTube and that they're home or with family elsewhere. But we know that there are a few of us that are at home and not well. And so we want to pray, especially for them as well, that this can be a time of comfort to receive healing. And we want to pray for those, um, like their medical staff, that are help treating them. And may they give them the necessary medical treatment that they need. But also, Heavenly Father, there we don't also want to just pray for their medical healing, but also for spiritual healing as well. Because I know what Mrs. Y has also said that a lot of our diseases began, um, begin in our minds. So help us to know you, know your word, and to have faith. Many of us may be weary and have lost sight of you, Heavenly Father. And so I pray that at this last Sabbath of the year, 2021, that we can refocus. We can look back at how you have been with us. We can look at all the situations that you have brought us through and uh, encouraged us 
um, through this past year and that we can see how you've led us this past year. And may that bring us into a renewed relationship with you this upcoming year in 2022. Father, we also want to pray for our, our church leadership. We have new church leadership coming on board. And we want to give thanks for those who are returning as leadership and those who are coming on as new. We pray that you'll provide a vision for us, a path, and the ability to achieve that these next two years. We want to ask for your Holy Spirit to be with each and every person in this congregation, our church family, and that we can minister to each other in profound ways this upcoming year. And we want to ask for your blessing upon each person. Be with Pastor Puya as he brings us the the message today, help hide him behind the cross, Heavenly Father. And may the words that he speaks be especially uh, viable for us today, that we may hear his words, that our ears, our minds, and our spirit would be in tune to the hearing of the message that is worthy to be heard today. Father, we ask for your Holy Spirit to continue to be with us, to remind us of when we fall short, and help us, Father, as you did with Moses when he struck the rock during our Sabbath school lesson that we studied this morning. We have different areas of our life that we are still dealing with, and so we pray and ask for forgiveness of those strongholds that may be upon us. And Father, we ask that as you do with Moses, that you'll bring us into the new Jerusalem, that you would, even though we may fall, um, that you would pick us back up and help us to be faithful, that we too, even if we pass away sometime here soon on this earth or if our goal is to hopefully be resurrected like Enoch and Elijah of old, that we may have that opportunity to see, be in your presence. Thank you, Father, for forgiveness of our sins. Help us to be receive that new and right spirit about us. Help us have the ability to minister to one another this year. We pray all these things in Christ's name. Amen. Thank you, everyone. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. I always have a surprise. Pastor Paul always takes me, and I know I heard my phone. So, by the way, thank you, Pastor, and uh, thank you, everyone, and happy Sabbath. I would like to pray first. Dear Lord, thank you so much for your goodness. Thank you for this year, although we have so many, um, there's so many um, disaster in this time of the year, but you are in control, Lord. 
We just have to be faithful and trust in you. Thank you so much for everything you have done. And I pray also for everyone and for every family. In Christ's name we pray, amen. amen. Okay, I would like to mention about the tithes and offering. Anyway, um, I'm, as I mentioned before, uh, you know, we have the obligation or it's not a mandatory, it's really up to us because we believe that God, uh, you know, provide us and everything. And for the tithes, it's really uh, very important because we are paying our, our pastor, they, we need to get, they need to get paid because they are, our bills also they are paying. It's like we're paying our taxes. And also our offering, the offering that goes to any different uh, helps around in our church and everything around the world. So I just, uh, you know, hope and pray that every one of us, because we have to trust the Lord, because the more you give, the more you receive. Because I, I experienced that before, you know, it was many years before I was converted as Seventh-day Adventist. It was in 1983. And at the time, my husband was working as a civil service in the military and, uh, you know, government. And so I stay home. And so I thought we have bills to pay. I kind of, I kind of struggled to that, you know, giving my tithe self. But my husband, you know, he believed it. So he gave his tithe. But I opposed to that. But now I learn because the way we give, we have to give it with our willing hearts. And, and you know, you, God will bless. I, 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 I learned that from my experience because when you're giving, it's like you feel happy or you feel joy. So, you know, this is what I, I share with you about giving tithes and offering. So thank you for, for everyone. And so we have just to have to be faithful. Amen. Also, our, even though our deaconess are not coming around to collect our tithes and offering, so we just have an envelope there for our you know, tithes and offering. So at the back of the, uh, by the door, there's a box there that you can drop your, your envelope. Thank you so much. Testing. Oh, sorry. Okay, so she's pressing her face against the window. Mom's driving. She's in the back seat, and she's putting her face against the window, and she's looking at everything as they pass by. And all of a sudden, she's like, oh, look, that's my friend. That's my friend. And the mother said, who is that? She said, it's Cindy. She's in my class. And she's going to roll down her window. And, well, maybe not. They don't roll. They just buzz it down. And then she opens the window, and she was ready to shout and say, what do you think she's going to say? Merry Christmas. 
She was ready to shout, but all of a sudden, she saw the girl turn, and she went down this lane to a house on the corner, and then she's like, "What? Are you, where is she going? She can't be living there. That house looks terrible. It's all full of weeds and things, all full of trash. And she didn't have a very nice house, her friend. And she's like, oh, mom, look at my friend, Cindy. She can't be too happy living in a house like that. And mom is like, well, I'm sure she'd rather live somewhere else, but maybe that's all they can afford. But we don't know what ha- why she lives there. But so her friend was really worried about, uh, Heidi was really worried about her friend. So she said, mom said, I'm sure she would like to live in a nicer place. But so Heidi sat in her seat and she, all day, she just kept thinking about her friend, Cindy. And then when dinner time came, she's sitting there eating her food. And usually when her brother does something silly, she's the first one to laugh. At the table, the brother dropped his food and it went on his lap. And she's just deep in her thoughts. She's not even laughing. And mom looked at her and said, are you okay, Heidi? Yeah, I'm okay. She said, what's wrong? She goes, I'm worried. She goes, what are you worried about? I'm worried about my friend, mom. I'm worried. She might not be having a nice Christmas like I am. She says, well, you can pray for her. She goes, yeah, but I want to do more. I want to do something more. What else can I do, mom? She goes, I know. I'm going to give her a lot of gifts. And, and, and she goes, well, I think your friend really wants your friendship. And of course, you're not going to tease her about the kind of place that she lives in. You wouldn't say anything bad about that, would you? She oh, no, mom. I'm, I'm going to be really kind to her. I think I'm even going to be more kind to her now because I, I think she's really... I think she's really hungry too, mom, because at school when we eat, she's the first one to grab the food and she's just shoveling all the food in her mouth. Like she's really hungry. And then I see whatever other kids don't eat, she puts it in her bag, mom. I think she takes it home for her mom and her brother and sister. She says, okay, I'm, I'm going to see what I can do. But mom said, first of all, that's not the first thing you should be thinking of. What can I give her? She said, what do you mean, mom? What should I be thinking? She said, you need to say in your heart and to God, am I willing? Am I willing to help this, my friend? Am I, am I willing to help somebody that needs help? And she goes, yes, mom, I'm willing. I'm willing. She said, okay, then you know what you should do. So she went in her room. She started packing up all her stuff. And and then mother finally checked on her and said, what are you doing? She goes, I'm getting all my dolls and toys that I hardly ever use anymore. And I'm going to put it in this box and I'm going to give it to Cindy. And I have a lot of clothes that don't fit me or I don't even use. And Cindy's a little bit smaller than me. So I think she'll fit in the clothes that don't fit me anymore. And mom said, that's great. She's going to be so happy. And then mom said, she told mom, mom, can you bake some of those coconut cookies? Cindy really likes those. So mom said, yes, I'll bake some cookies. So they packed everything away. And then she said, okay, I'll t-. mom said, I'll take you. And of course, before they went in, they said a prayer for Cindy and her family. So that's kids. I know it's Christmas. A lot of us just think of, wow, what am I going to get under the tree? Like Auntie Patty told the story, mine, 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 you know, but we need to think of others as well, right? Some kids that don't even get a lot of presents like you probably did, but some kids, if they're lucky, they got one gift and some kids, they didn't get anything. But anyway, if you have a lot of stuff that you don't even wear anymore, or you don't play with, and you know, somebody that really doesn't have as much as you do, that would make God happy if you shared your things that, and even I remember pastor said this one time, it's not giving something that you don't want anymore. Sometimes you have to give a great item, a good unused, a new brand new item. He said, because you're going to give your best to your friend, right? We give our best to the Lord. Let's give our best to our friends. But also if you have excess, why not share? And I'm sure you will make Jesus happy today. Okay. So hopefully you remember that story and you'll take it in your thoughts and Share when you can to somebody that needs it more than you do. All right. Thank you, boys and girls. You can go back. And at the end of service, we'll have some of the children holding their um, little cups out there for offering. The Most of the offering, I believe, goes to the children's Adventist education. Let's have a prayer. Father in heaven, we thank you so much for your son who was born and that we celebrate Christmas. And I ask you to be with all the children, Lord. Help them to remember to not only receive, but to give and to give to others that need it more than they do and to be willing to share and say, yes, Lord, I'm willing. 
Thank you for these children. Bless them. Keep them and their families safe. May we have a wonderful Sabbath day is our prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. Happy Sabbath, church. Today's scripture reading is found in Matthew 2, verses 1 to 2. It reads, Now after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and have come to worship him. May the Lord bless the reading of this word. Thank you, Nixie. Yes, I was just reminded that I forgot to call Auntie Diane for the new board members. Auntie Diane will be serving as the head deaconess. Uh, I apologize, Auntie. You know, when you're the pastor and you have so many things on your mind and you're not always able to remember everything. I'm only human after all. All right, this morning I was asked to do special music by our music leader for this year, Delima, said, Pastor, you have to do one special music before the end of the year. And so let me just, yeah, turn off my personal mic here. I'll use this one for now. So I was assigned to do special music, and um, this is the last Sabbath of the year. So if I don't do it now, I won't have another opportunity before the end of the year. So let me... You know, I preach on a regular basis, and when it comes to preaching, it comes very natural. When it comes to doing special music, I'm, you know, this is not natural for me, and I had to practice a bit. But still, disclaimer, uh, singing is not the area where I feel gifted, but uh, since I've been assigned, I will sing anyway for the glory of God, all right? So, focus on the message. Not my voice primarily, but the message, the song that I want to sing this morning is, Do You Hear What I Hear? It's one of those Christmas songs that I like to listen. The song says, you know, a star, a star, dancing in the night. And then the last part is the child, the child, the child sleeping in the night. He will bring us goodness and light. All right. Said the night wind to the little lamb Do you see what I see? Way up in the sky, little lamb Do you see what I see? A star, a star Dancing in the night with a tail as big as a kite With a tail as big as a kite Said the little lamb to the shepherd boy Do you hear what I hear? Ringing through the sky, shepherd boy do you hear what I hear? A song, a song, high above the trees With a voice as big as the sea With a voice as big as the sea Said the shepherd boy to the mighty king do you know what I know? In your palace warm, mighty king Do you know what I know? 
A child, a child, shivers in the cold. Let us bring him silver and gold. Let us bring him silver and gold. Said the king to the people everywhere. Listen to what I say. Pray for peace, people everywhere. Listen to what I say. A child, a child, sleeping in the night, he will bring us goodness and light. He will bring us goodness and light. He will bring us goodness and light. A child, a child, sleeping in the night, he will bring us goodness and light. He will bring us goodness and light. All right, thank you. A child, a child. Jesus will bring us goodness and light. All right, let me turn on my mic. Check, 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 check. Is this working? Yeah. All right. Happy Sabbath. I don't know if this is working. Check, check. Okay, this is good. All right. Thank you for coming to church this morning. Happy Sabbath once again. This is a high Sabbath. And let, re let me remind you once again that our women ministries have... Uh, Put a Christmas tree here. And there's a reason to this. I want to read to you from Ellen White, where she recommended every church. This is what she said. In every church, let your smaller offerings be placed upon your Christmas tree. Let the precious emblem, evergreen, suggest the holy work of God and His beneficent to us. And the loving heart work will be to save other souls who are in darkness let your, let your works be in accordance with your faith. All right. So from the recommendation of Ellen White, one of the founders of our church, she recommends that in every church, let our offerings, smaller offerings, special Christmas offerings, be hanged upon the Christmas tree to help people who are in the darkness, to reach people in the darkness. And so uh, if you haven't done yet for this Christmas, before you go walk out today, Right. On top of the regular Titan offering, if you can write in one of those envelopes, you know, a special Christmas offering. And regardless of how big or small the amount is, come and place them on the Christmas tree. Right? And uh, those special Christmas offerings will go towards helping people who are in need, people who are lonely, people who will be blessed through your Sabbath uh, Christmas special offering. All right? So as you see, one of the envelopes is already here. So today is your last opportunity. We won't have the Christmas tree anymore next Sabbath because it will be New Year by then. All right. All right. With that, I want to invite you to bow your heads with me as I pray one more time before we get into the word, the message for today. All right. Let's pray. Father in heaven, once again, we invite the Holy Spirit to speak to our hearts today as today is a special Sabbath. It's the last Sabbath of the year as well as Christmas. And so... We invite the Holy Spirit to speak to us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. For the message today, I want to talk to you about the wise men from the East. It's a well-known Christmas story, but I thought we can learn some lessons again as we reflect on this Christmas story. Right? And the title of my message this morning is, Wise Men Still Seek Him. Even today, wise men still seek the Lord. Whenever we hear about the wise men from the East, especially in paintings, how many wise men would you see? Three. But you know, it's interesting that the Bible never told us that there were three wise men. It just said the wise men from the East. Could have been five. Could have been ten. Could have been 20, could have been a big group. We don't know how many there were exactly, but we do know that they brought three special gifts. Right? We'll come to that later. 
But turn your Bible with me to Matthew chapter 2. Matthew chapter 2 is where we will be this morning. All right. Matthew chapter 2, very well-known Christmas story. Wise man from the east. Right? While you're turning your Bible. For those of you who don't know me, for those of you, for uh, if this is the first time you come to this church, my name is Puya. I have the privilege of serving as the pastor of this church. I was born and raised in a beautiful country called Myanmar, formerly known as Burma. It's all the way in Southeast Asia, right in between Thailand and India. So I come from the East. It's good that the Bible says the wise men came from the East. Some of you got it, right? And when my family moved here to the United States, uh, we were in Maryland, the East Coast. Is there anyone from the East Coast in this place? Yeah, some of you, all right? It's good, because the Bible says the wise men came from the East, right? Once again, Hawaii is like one of the West, the furthest West <laughs> for the United States in terms of the states, right? I do know that we have some territories where not part of the states, but still. Anyway, the wise men from the east, Matthew chapter 2, verse 1. Now, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and have come to worship him. Now, let's pause for a moment there. It's interesting that as we survey the story of the birth of Jesus, the people who welcomed him, the people who recognized the birth of Jesus, the Messiah, were not the religious leaders. I don't know if you have paid attention to that fact. It was not the church leaders. It was not the priests. It was not the high priests. It were not the people in the church, in the temple, who recognized the birth of Jesus. Who were the first people to learn of the birth of Jesus? The shepherds. The shepherds were not in the respected class of social hierarchy during the time of the birth of Jesus. In fact, right, shepherding was one of the lowly, humble works. They were sleeping in the outs, in, the, uh, in the, the, the area, the hills where they were tending to their sheep. Now think about this. They were humble, poor. They were nobodies of the society that first learned of the birth of the king of the universe. As the king of the universe became a man. And now we come to chapter 2. And the people who learned of the birth of the Messiah were not the Jews. They were people from the east. So if we look at ancient map of Palestine, um, the east of Israel would probably be Persia, right? The area of Persia. And most Bible scholars believe that these wise men were from Persia. Now I wonder, how is it that these non-Jews came to Jerusalem asking about the king of the Jews? Huh. Could it be, right? Could it be that these wise men have been studying about God. How were they able to know? And the irony is when they came to Jerusalem, right? We look at verse 3. When Herod the king heard this, he was troubled and all Jerusalem with him. So apparently, if all of Jerusalem were surprised and troubled by the arrival of the wise men, I think it is safe to assume that they were not Maybe just two or three wise men, you know, just coming in to talk to the king. Apparently, if all of Jerusalem was surprised, maybe this was a big group. Maybe this was a much bigger group than just three wise men. I don't know. It could be. I think it is safe to assume 
that they cause some type of surprise for a lot of people in Jerusalem. Now, why would they come to Jerusalem? Why would the wise men come to Jerusalem? Well, they must have thought, well, we saw a star. And if this is about the king of the Jews, well, the capital city for the Jews is Jerusalem. So let's go to Jerusalem. Probably everybody will know. But to their surprise, they did not know. They did not know. The people themselves did not know. Go with me to John chapter 1. Put your fingers in Matthew chapter 2. We'll come back to that. John chapter 1. It's talking about the beginning where there was the word, right? Verse 11 of John chapter 1. John chapter 1 verse 11. He came to his own. And his own did not receive him. His own did not receive him. God had chosen the Jews as the chosen people to be the people to tell the whole world about the love of God. And yet the Jews have come to that place where they saw God and the special revelation that they have received as some type of uh, unique revelation just for them and not for others. So, they put God in a box. Let's say there is a little box here. They put God in that little box and they say, God reveals to us only through the prophets of the Jews and the Israels. And so, uh, you know, the rest of the world doesn't matter. It's just us and us alone. And they have set up walls of separation between themselves and the rest of the world. They misunderstood the reason for God choosing them to be the special people. All right? And so, let's continue with the story. All right? In verse 2, they said, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and have come to worship him. All right? We have seen his star. How with ancient non-Jewish people from the far eastern country know that there is a connection between the Jewish king and a star. Right? I want to suggest to you two explanations to this. One, it could be that they have been studying the book of Numbers. So go with me to the book of Numbers that Moses wrote. Numbers 24. Numbers 24, right? In the book Numbers, we find an interesting story where we find a prophecy. Numbers 24. All right. If you go first to Numbers 23, you'll see the title that Balaam's first prophecy. Who was Balaam? Balaam was a prophet of God who apostatized. Because they promised him all kinds of wealth and gold and money. That he was invited to curse the children of Israel. And when he went out to curse the children of Israel, he could not curse He only was able to bless them. But still, he told the other nations how to defeat the Israelites. He could not curse them. He said, well, but you know, if you you mix with them in terms of, you know, sexual immorality, then the children of Israel will apostatize. Unfortunately, his prediction came through, right? But it's interesting that among the prophecies of Balaam, where he could not curse the children of Israel at all, Look at verse 17 of Numbers 24. Look at that. Numbers chapter 24, verse 17. In Balaam's fourth prophecy, he said, I see him, but not now. I behold him, but not fear. A star shall come out of Jacob. A scepter shall rise out of Israel and batter the bro of Moab and destroy all the sons of Tomut. 
embedded in this prophecy was a star to come out of Jacob. And so, it is possible that because Balaam apostatized to pagans, to people in the east who wanted to really, you know, curse the children of Israel, and they hired this prophet and could not curse. But probably they knew, those people in the east probably knew that Balaam had some kind of connection with the, the God of Israel. So they probably might have kept his writings and his prophecy. And so by the time of the birth of Jesus, there were these ancient Far Eastern people who were seeking, who were reading different scripture. And they probably read the book of Numbers too, where it was written that a star will come out of Jacob. And they must have concluded that this star was going to be the king, a representation of the king of the Jews. According to Ellen White, she wrote in the book Desire of Ages that these wise men were not worshippers of idols. Apparently, they were seekers of the one true God. They were monotheists, meaning they only worship one God. Probably they had many differences with the Jews, but they also shared similar beliefs about the one true God. During that time, most of the gods in ancient Palestine and those area, far eastern areas were very local, meaning the gods of, you know, those ancient people were very limited to their own area. But apparently, these wise men worship not just a local deity or a local god just for one area of the land, but the god of the creator. So they were seeking, they were searching. Now, parallel that with the mindset of the Jews at that time, it's completely different, right? Look at this. The Jews at that time put God in a box. They said, okay, God has revealed himself to us through the scripture, through Torah, through the writings of Moses and through the prophets, and God will only speak to us through this little box. And here were non-Jews who were exploring about God through different writings. Right? They were not, they were not close-minded. They did not put God in a box. They probably are wise men who also studied a lot about the stars and the moon and just the nature, the created world. If you go with me to Psalm 19, right? Go with me to the Psalm. Psalm 19. This is the Psalm of David. There's a very interesting concept here, right? Psalm 19, if you are there, say amen. amen. Psalm 19, David wrote, The heavens declare the glory of God. All right, think about that. What declares the glory of God? The heavens, the stars, the moon, everything declares the glory of God. And the firmament shows His handiwork. Day unto day utter speech, and night unto night reveals knowledge. There is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. Their line has gone out through all the earth and their words to the end of the world. In them, he or God has set a tabernacle for the sun. Now think about this. Here in Psalm 19, David described this idea of God revealing himself to every single person, regardless of language, nation, tribes, through nature. So think about this. If even people have never heard about the name Jesus, by looking at the stars, by looking at nature and the created heavens. If a person thinks carefully, he should be able to come to the conclusion that there is a creator God. You know, one of these days, if you have an opportunity, go out to Camp Wainai or one of those areas where you don't have a lot of city lights. Look up in the night sky and look at the stars. Think about the cosmos. And you will see how small you are. And it will put you in a situation where you can't help but wonder what it must be. Like what must be beyond those stars? You know? <clears throat> a lot of people who don't believe in God, 
right? Like atheists would say, oh, I can't believe in God because of this and this and that. And yet, these same atheists who don't want to believe in God are open to receiving messages from aliens. Right? These scientists have created all kinds of instruments and satellites and uh, search for extraterrestrial like, uh, beings. I forgot what they call. There was a mission from NASA where they, they sent out a satellite to detect any messages from other beings in the universe. And just think about that. Right? Although they say that, many people, they say that they don't want to believe in God. They say that there is no God. And yet they say, hmm, but I believe that aliens could exist. I believe... There could be beings outside of this world, you know? So nowadays, when I talk to atheists, this, this is how I would approach them. I would say, do you think it's possible for aliens to exist, that other beings in the universe could exist? And they would say, yeah, I think it's possible. I would say, well, what about we say God is an alien? <laughs> God is alien to us because he's outside of this world. To that, no one can argue, because by looking at the created world, the created universe, you have to know that there is a creator God. So I would submit to you that these wise men from the East have been studying the stars, the moon, the sky, the planets, as much as they could, observing the created universe. And they came to the conclusion that there is a creator God. And so with that, they were trying to connect with that creator. They were seeking him. They were searching for him. And as they were looking at different writings, different writings of prophets. They probably came to this book Numbers, the book of Numbers, where there was a prophecy that says, a star will come out of Jacob. They connected with that. Well, this prophecy was primarily uh, prophesied in the context of the Jews. So probably this has to do with the king of the Jews. And probably they connected the idea of a star with a special revelation from an outer space. Beyond this planet, beyond this world, there is someone out there who was sending a message to the world. So they seek him. They search for him. They followed the star. They followed the star. Let's go back to Matthew chapter 2. So when they came to Jerusalem, the king and all of Jerusalem were troubled. And so what did the king do? Verse 4. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and the scribes of the people together, he inquired of them of where the Christ was to be born. So King Herod invited the wise men of the area, all the priests, all the Bible scholars and the teachers in the church, in the temple. Hey, come, tell me, is there any prophecy? Is there any prophecy in your ancient Hebrew scriptures where it is written of the location for the birth of the Messiah, of the King. Well, look at that, <clears throat> verse 5. These scholars, they knew right away. Why? They memorized the scripture so well. Verse 5, so they said to him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet. Right? Prophet, uh, prophet in ancient Malachi, right? Ancient time Malachi had written. But you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are not the least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you shall come a ruler who will shepherd my people of Israel. They knew right away. So, okay, according to our ancient prophecy, it's supposed to be in Bethlehem. So look at verse 7. So, then Herod, when he had secretly called the wise men, he didn't want to call them before the other people. Just come to the side. Let's talk in secret. That he determined from them what time the star appeared. He already knew the location of where the king was to be born. All he needed to know was the time period. <laughs> and he, said, he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the young child. And when you have found him, bring back word to me that I may come and worship him also. When they had heard the king, they departed. And behold, 
The star which they had seen in the east went before them till it came and stood over where the young child was. And when they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceedingly great joy. They were so happy. They didn't know that the king had an evil plan. I mean, for King Herod, right? King Herod was known as a very uh, dangerous, angry, tyrant king. He came from a line of broken families. One of the kings uh, in, in, in his immediate family was known to have killed all his siblings just so that no one would challenge him for the throne. Right? In those times, kings conquered by eliminating others who could challenge for the throne. So for King Herod, the only thing he could think of, if there's a new king for the Jews, I need to kill him. If not, he's going to challenge my throne. So he sent the wise man to Bethlehem. Now, think about this. As soon as they walked out again, they saw the star. I think there is a great lesson for us here. That is, only as much as we seek God, will God reveal himself to us. If you are close-minded about the possibility of God's revelation, you will not find him. Because God will not force himself upon you. God does not force himself into our lives. But he will reveal to us as much as we seek him, as long as we seek him, he will continue to reveal to us. All right? The wise men seek God. They were seeking for the newborn king. And so God revealed himself to them through the star. All right? It must have been a unique star. It must have been a different star. Because if it is just any other star, how would they know the difference? Probably there was something different about this star that they recognized that this is special. We need to follow this star. We have never seen this star before, so let's follow this star. So they knew as soon as they saw the star, they were, they were exceedingly happy and joyful. Right? Joy filled them because they knew that an outer space being or God was leading them through the star. So friends, are you seeking Him? Are you seeking God? Right? If you're seeking God, God will reveal Himself to you. Open your hearts to the possibility. On the contrary, the people in Jerusalem did not follow them. Because they put God in a tiny little box. They say, we already received everything we need to know about God. Here is the box. Here is the revelation. Let's just read and study. They knew by memory where the Messiah was to be born. Had they studied the prophecies of Daniel about the, the 70 weeks of prophecy, right? From the time of the command to rebuild Jerusalem, there would be 69 weeks. In other words, 483 years until the coming of the anointed one. Daniel had already given them the time period when the Messiah was supposed to come. They had everything they needed. But you know, it's one thing to know, you know, by head knowledge versus heart knowledge. If the heart was not willing to accept God, they may know by head knowledge. It did not translate. Probably, here's what I believe, that blinded the Jews from receiving the Messiah was pride because they think they already had everything. They knew everything they needed to know. Why would other non-Jews come and tell us about our king? If God was going to reveal himself, if the Messiah was supposed to come, we would be the first to know. Not the shepherds, not the poor people, not Gentiles. Pride. Pride, pride. And so I plead with you, my dear friends today, let us never get to the place where we think we know everything. All right? Let us continue to be open-minded about more truth from the scripture that God has yet to reveal. That was the mistake that the Jews made. They thought they knew everything. 
Let me speak to you directly as Seventh-day Adventists. Let us not think that God will only speak to Seventh-day Adventists within the denomination. There are many times that God might want to teach us a few things here and there. <laughs> many important lessons from outside the box that we find ourselves in. All right? We may have the revelation of God. We may have the truth. But let's not be close-minded of how God chooses to reveal Himself to us. All right? Today, I want us to <laughs> go back and forth. Right? Sometimes it's good to go back and forth in Scripture. Here, little, there, little. Go back with me to Psalm 19, right? Where we read earlier about God's revelation in nature. Psalm 19, right? Now, look at this. Verse 7, right? After talking about God revealing Himself through nature, the heavens declare the glory of God, right? Verse 1 says, all the stars in the heavens declare the glory of God. Now, go with me to verse 7. Verse 7 of Psalm 19 says, The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, yea, much more than fine gold, sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb. Moreover, by them your servant is warned, and in keeping them there is great reward. All right. So, Psalm 19 introduces the revelation of God through nature. Say, the heavens, the stars, the moon, the sky, everything that is created reveals that there is God. And we come to verse 7 that says, yes, that is the general revelation of God. And God, in a special way, reveals Himself through the Scripture. Right? When you say the law of God, it's talking about Torah, the Scripture. So, there are two ways so far that God has revealed Himself. One is through nature. Second, special revelation through the Scriptures. Right? And so, we come back to these wise men. They studied the general revelation of God. They knew that there is a Creator God. But that is not enough to bring them to a personal relationship with the Creator. So they seek a special revelation in the Scriptures. Right? So when you have time, go out and enjoy nature. Right? Go and swim in the ocean and hike the mountains here in Hawaii. Enjoy the beautiful beach that we have here in the islands. And enjoy in the realization that God has created all of this. But that is not enough, <laughs> like the wise men. Let's just not be satisfied with the general revelation of God. Let's seek a personal relationship with that Creator by looking into the Scriptures. Right? So, there's that point. God has revealed Himself, not just through the revealed Word, but through nature right? and through the Scripture. Let's not be close-minded. Right? Let's understand that God always has more to reveal to us. So, go back to Matthew chapter 2. Now we come to verse 10. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceedingly great joy. Verse 11. And when they had come into the... What does your Bible say? When they had come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented gifts to him, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Now, isn't it interesting that according to the Christmas tree, uh, the Christmas story, rather, sorry, Jesus was born in where? A manger? Was it in a house? No. It was in a barn, wasn't it? And yet, by the time the wise men arrived, they were found in a house. Which means that the wise men did not arrive on the night that Jesus was born, as many uh, you know, Christmas stories depict them to be, like Christmas nativity scene. If you look at, you know, Christmas nativity uh, pictures or scenes outside church buildings, you would see the wise men coming to Jesus, baby Jesus in a barn. No, that's not what the Bible says. They came into the house. So, many, many scholars believe that as they study this story, uh, especially when we come to the time when King Herod decided to kill 
all the children, all the babies under two years of age. It must be that the wise men search king, the new king, baby Jesus, for two years. Think about that. It must have been a long journey coming from the east. You know, they didn't have uh, cars. They didn't have, you know, motorcycles. They probably had to walk or ride on camels. It took them months and months and months. Finally, they came to Jerusalem. And then they had to continue the journey down to Bethlehem. By the time they arrived Bethlehem, probably, it was close to two years already. Think about this. All that they did for that entirety of their, you know, their search was just wanting to have a relationship, wanting to meet that king in person. Two years, friends, two years. When was the last time you spent some alone time with God for 10 minutes? When was the last time you read the Bible on your own by yourself for 15 minutes? For 30 minutes? What about one hour? <laughs> These people, they seek God. They search for God for two whole years. Finally, they came into the house. And when they saw the young child with his mother Mary, they fell down and worshipped him. They worshipped that king. Right? They bowed down. And they gave him gifts. Gold. Gold was oftentimes treasures and gifts for kings. Recognizing, apparently, that this baby, this young child, is a king. And the next gift was frankincense. It was uh, a perfume that was used by priests. Pointing out that the king is also a priest. And last but not the least, the last gift, the myrrh. It was an ointment that they used to prepare burial for burial. Bodies that were dying, they would apply that ointment of myrrh. Pointing that this king one day would die for people. All those gifts have special meaning apparently. Right? And remember, they had to flee. They had to flee because King Herod, knowing that the wise men were not coming back because angels, the angel had revealed to them to return to their home country from a different route. King Herod was angry, decided to kill all the babies under two years of age. And as such, <clears throat> the family of Joseph, Mary, and Jesus had to flee to Egypt. They became refugees. Yeah, just a side note. Welcome refugees. Amen. Welcome people who are fleeing from their homes. Our Lord Jesus fled, right? And these gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh, they served as a source of income for those years that they had to be in a foreign country. Right? God provided for them. All right. But the lesson, the greatest lesson I want to challenge us this morning is this idea that the wise men seek to. Are you wise? <laughs> Do you want to be a wise man? Do you want to be a wise woman? Then seek him. Because wise men, wise women still seek him even today. And as much as you seek him, as long as you seek him, he will reveal himself to you. All right? And so this Jesus who has come into this world died on our behalf. And even when Jesus was resurrected, the disciples were able to touch him and eat with him, meaning that Jesus will forever remain partly human. Think about that, right? This week I read a quote from Pastor Ty Gibson. Um, where was Sid? Sid works with Pastor Ty Gibson a lot, so we were talking about this. Pastor Ty Gibson posted this, and I really appreciate this. He said, Merry Christmas and Happy Sabbath, everyone. Right? In the ancient Hebrew way of thinking, when the Sabbath intersected with another holy you know, remembrance, it is called a high Sabbath, when two sacred realities overlap in one awareness, in our awareness, the mind reaches higher by a kind of compounded 
right? Holiness. Even though we don't know exactly when Jesus was born, the date exactly, we celebrate the fact that he came into this world. So he said, today we remember that God created the world, right? On this Sabbath, Sabbath is a reminder that God is the creator, right? So today we remember that God created the world without our help. And God redeemed us without our help. And so we can rest in the assurance of his unconditional love. Today, we also remember the birth of our creator and redeemer in our very flesh. God did not merely migrate from heaven to earth. He embarked upon a transmigration of nature. He who had only ever been divine became human. The incarnation entailed a fundamental change in the very makeup of God. In Christ, God became a one-of-a-kind hybrid being in which divinity and humanity, right? Divine nature and human nature were eternally married as a union. God and humanity are forever one person in Jesus. And I thought that was so beautiful, right? When Jesus became a human being, <laughs> he joined heaven with earth. And as long as Jesus is our high priest, our king, and our Lord, we have a place near the throne of God. Jesus was resurrected after he was killed on the cross. He rose again as partly man and partly God. Fully God and yet fully man. So, Jesus is the God-man. This Christmas season, let us be reminded that God has become man. And so we have a place in the heart of God. We have a place in the heart of God. I want to read to you one last quote. Right? This is from a, a Quaker theologian named Elton Trueblood. Right? He wrote this. He said, the historic Christian doctrine of the divinity of Christ does not simply mean that Jesus is like God. It is far more radical than that. It means that God is like Jesus. <laughs> you want to know what God looks like? Look at Jesus. So through the person of Jesus Christ, all of us are able to study the life of Jesus and say, huh, that's who God is like. Think about this. In all ancient cultures of gods, there was never a time where the gods became man and dwelt with us. There's only one story. It's the story of Jesus, where God became man. And through that revelation of God in person in Jesus Christ, we're able to look at him and say, that is who God is like. So if you're struggling in your faith to hold on to God, look at Jesus. All right? Look at Jesus. This is where I draw source of strength for my spiritual walk. When I have difficult times in my faith, in my journey of faith, I look at the person of Jesus Christ and I tell myself, if God is like Jesus, I still want to believe in Him. Right? I will worship Him as my King, my priest, and my sacrifice. The wise men seek Him. They came all the way from the east. Now, it's interesting that when we look at the Bible, in Jesus himself, where he preaches about the future, where one day, go with me to one last verse, Matthew chapter 8. Matthew chapter 8, about this idea of Jesus' message and his love for everybody. Matthew chapter 8, I'll read from verse 5, right? Now when Jesus had entered Capernaum, a centurion came to him, pleading with him, saying, Lord, my servant is lying at home paralyzed, dreadfully tormented. Jesus said to him, I will come and heal him. The centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that you should come under my roof, but only speak a word and my servant will be healed. For I am also a man under authority, having soldiers under me. And I say to this one, go, and there he goes. And to another, come, and he comes. And to my servant, do this, and he does it. And when Jesus heard it, he marveled and said to those who followed, Assuredly, I say to you, I have not found such great fate, not even in Israel. 
verse 11. Look at this part. Verse 11, Jesus said, And I say to you that many will come from east and west and sit down with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven, but the sons of the kingdom will be cast out into outer darkness. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then Jesus said to the centurion, Go away, and as you have believed, so let it be done for you. And his servant was healed that same hour. Here was a centurion, a Gentile, coming to Jesus, asking for help. And Jesus saying, let it be according to your desire. And Jesus said, one day, people from the east and the west will come, sit down with Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. They will sit down and celebrate in the new world. For the Jews, this was very difficult to hear. You know why? They thought that God was only for them because they were descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And here Jesus was saying, no, 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 no. The kingdom of God is not just for the Jews or just one tribe. It's for everybody in the world that one day, one day, people from the east, the west will come. And check this out. On his birth, during, soon after Jesus' birth, the wise men from the east came. On his final hours, there were Greeks from the West, the East and the West came together, meeting at the cross. And now where are we? Geographically, we are to the West of Calvary. We are to the West of Israel. No matter where you come from, no matter your origin, no matter your ethnicity, there is space for you on that table, right? At the feast that Jesus will celebrate with us. There is place for you and me because of Jesus. And so I invite you, Let's continue to seek Him. Let's continue to study nature and understand that God created all of this. And let's continue to study the scripture like the wise men for the special revelation of God. Let's continue to seek Him. All right? May God bless each and every one of us this Sabbath. Let me pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for this Sabbath. We thank you for the reminder that Jesus Christ came into this world, that God became man. God became a human being and he will forever be joined to the human family. And so because of Jesus, we have a place in heaven. So this Christmas, Lord, may we reflect this love that you have given to us, to others. May we share your blessing with others. May we give gifts to others. May not be gifts of material things. May it be gift of time, a gift of love. After all, Christmas is all about giving. And as the wise men seek for the king and found, we too, Lord, we pray that we too may find you as we seek you. This is my prayer. This is our prayer this morning that every one of us will continue to seek for your continued revelation. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Check, check, check. May the congregation please rise for the recession of him. When the trumpet of the Lord shall sound, and time shall be no more, and the morning breaks eternal bright and fair. When the seed of earth shall gather over on the other shore, and the roll is caught up yonder, I'll be there. When the roll is caught up yonder, 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 I'll be there. On that bright and cloudless morning, when the dead in Christ shall rise, and the glory of His resurrection share. When His chosen ones shall
wish I gathered to their home beyond the skies And the road is caught up yonder, I'll be there When the road is caught up yonder When the road is caught up yonder When the road is caught up yonder When the road is caught up yonder, I'll be there Let us labor for the master from the dawn to setting sun let us learn of all these wonders, love and care. And when all of life is over and our work on earth is done, and the road is caught up yonder, I'll be there. When the road is caught up yonder, 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 I'll be there. Please be seated until the deacons dismiss your own. Mahalo and happy Sabbath.